Check it out. So today we have Jorge's stock F-150 crew cab. And we're gonna put on this boss manifold right here, ported boss manifold. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? So, ah, it got stuck in there. We'll leave it there for a sec. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, it's stock right now. So it's got an air raid intake, I think. I haven't tuned it yet. I haven't even read the stock file off of it yet. Really, base, base, base model, which means it doesn't weigh much. Let's see. Stock, stock, little air raid. Looks like he lost the, looks like he lost the little plastic that goes here. So it's not sealed box. But um, let's go ahead and do a 40 to 100 pull on the Draggy. See what it does stock. And then we'll go ahead and put that guy on there and see what it does with that in the tune. It's on 22s. So it's not gonna be crazy fast. But yeah, let's try to make this 40 to 100 a little metric for us, uh, for these, for us slow guys. Anything, anything, um, anything slower than like a 10 second, 60 to 130, probably should consider a 40 to 100 um, pull instead. I think that'd be, that'd be a nice metric for slower guys, slower guys, you know, this way you don't, um, you're not taking... 15 seconds to get to 130 and you're worried about you know getting caught because you're not fast enough because you're not going 60 to 130 in three seconds or four seconds like some of these crazy fast guys out here so yeah let's go ahead and see what it does 40 to 100 let's try to make that a metric i think that's a good metric for these uh f-150s to see where they're going that's what i tune by on the f-150s so let's see what it's doing beautiful weather in houston texas today all week long just want to drive the windows down oh no it's dusty but uh we're gonna go to mexico right on the other side of the border it's a five hour drive but these are the lengths i go through for my customers so we're gonna go ahead and uh make our little five hour drive to mexico and uh we'll do our pulls there 40 to 100 i'm probably gonna do them in a higher gear than it would be like if i were to be racing somebody why am i gonna do that uh, just so I don't spin, so that I can get repeatable results for the tuning process. So we're gonna it's stock right now, E85, and a cold air stock tune. Uh, I think he, it sounds like he has a low exhaust, but um, yeah, I'm gonna do it in a higher gear than I would normally do it if I were racing or something. Why am I gonna do that? Well, so I don't spin, and whenever I put the boss manifold on with the tune, I don't want to spin. I want it to be exactly the same. So I'm gonna do the same gear that I did, and um, same gear that I did before with the uh with the boss manifold this way i don't spin and it gives, skews the results basically or we might get two we'll get one where we hit it like if we we're racing and hopefully it doesn't spin and then one where we hit it from a higher gear where we know it won't spin so we can uh you know have repeatable results for the tuning process all right here we go new 40 to 100 So that was a 974 in the last one. Now we're gonna do it in third gear so we can make sure we don't spin. When we put the boss manifold on, we wait for this truck to get out of the way. He decided to get in the way. Come on, all right, that should be enough. Fuji. Converter locked up. And let's 60. see. Okay, so that was unexpected, but you know what? It kind of makes sense. So on the stock tune, stock manifold, it actually went <laughs> a hundredth of a second faster leaving in third gear versus second gear. So something to be learned there with the stock tune, the stock manifold is making more power probably down low and leaving in third gear versus second gear for a 40 to 100, for a 40 to 100 sweep, 4100 pool. Uh, we'll see what it does with the boss manifold and the tune in it. First things first, we stop at my Mexican pit stop. Get a monster. Maskless. We're in Texas. 
Uh, I don't see my favorite monster here. There's a gold one that's pretty good that they came out with. Uh, this one's fine. All right, 20 minute long read process for the uh, 10 speed cars and trucks. So while I was doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all these vacuum lines and everything. Uh, and if you're a customer, you have a detailed video that I can provide you. It's uh, 45 minutes long. It's basically exactly how you should install this boss manifold. Um, it's angled up because the thing likes to get stuck in there. But uh, exactly how you should install a boss manifold to avoid the most amount of problems possible. This way, uh, when I'm tuning it, I'm not fighting your install issues. You installed it exactly how I wanted you to. And uh, yeah, if you're a customer, you got that video, just let me know and I can send you a link. All right, there she is. Beautiful boss manifold install. It's OE as fuck. So we'll go ahead and load the base tune in, see what she does, and I'll give you an update. Here's a little tip I want you guys to see. When you're flashing your tune, it should take only about 30 seconds on a truck like this, which is a 2018 and newer F-150. It should only take about 30 seconds to write the tune. So if it's taking three minutes, like you see here, you're gonna have to reflash the truck. It just basically means that for some reason it didn't communicate properly with the truck, with the computer, and it's taking three minutes. So if you're doing a right calibration, which you should only do a right calibration unless your tuner tells you otherwise, and it takes three minutes on a 2018 and newer F-150 or Mustang, then rewrite it again. Don't even bother trying to drive it. It's going to drive stupid. Something, whatever happened, happened. But just rewrite it again. It should only take about 30 seconds. So let it do its thing. Let it finish. But just know that you're going to re have to rewrite it again. All right. Now that we got the tune in, we're going to wait for it to idle down. And then we're going to listen for vacuum leaks. What you hear here is from the intake manifold. This is from the uh, cold air. No it's sealed off. But once it idles down, you won't hear too much from here. You can actually listen around the intake manifold for a vacuum leak. All right, now the cold air is being quiet because it closed the throttle body a little bit. Cause... And I don't hear anything at all. All I hear is the clicking noises. If you have a coyote, get used to these. And we're good to go. Let's go test it out. All right, now I can start data logging. And then on the data log, the fuel trims aren't going crazy. Normally, whenever you have a vacuum leak, uh, the fuel trims will start going crazy, you know, above 10%. 12%, you know, 15, 20, 30, 50%. I've seen, I've seen some pretty crazy installs where bank one, which would be the passenger side, is trimming like fucking 50%. And bank two, the driver side is trimming like 5%. So, I mean, that tells you pretty, it's a pretty obvious sign that there's a uh, install issue and you have a vacuum leak on bank one. So this one right here, we're trimming pretty much on the money. So that tells us that we don't have a vacuum leak and that the base tune is ready to go as far as fuel go, feeling goes. All right, back to our favorite street in Mexico. I drove five hours to get here and I drove five hours back to put the boss manifold on. So the, the lengths I go to for customers. But um, yeah, so one thing that a lot of people always, you know, mention online or on uh, forums on the internet is a loss of low end torque with the boss manifold to which i say is pretty much uh non-existent you know the uh, only thing you might feel is a slight you might need to give it a little bit more throttle at part throttle let's say when you're accelerating but this truck i don't feel it in particular some trucks you'll feel it especially a truck like mine where i obviously have a big stall and all that stuff obviously i need to give it a little more throttle to accelerate you know at part throttle a wide open throttle is a different story and then another thing too i i don't think i've seen a faster um I don't think I've seen a better 60 foot from any vehicle with a factory stall, any truck with a factory stall than uh, uh, one of my customers, Ricky, a 168 or something like that with a boss manifold and a factory stall. So that's kind of um, tells you there that if you, especially if you're racing and you don't worry about low end torque when it comes to this. Oh, looks like we are not going to do a pool here because there is a Mexican Federale right there. Right, just like the last pool, we're gonna do this in second gear and then we'll do it in third gear. So we'll get up to 40. 30. 
our second gear pull from 40 to 100 we picked up like about two seconds or so so um pretty crazy i mean not incredibly crazy this is already known that obviously a tune and then you have the manifold on top of that it's gonna be a pretty big difference so two seconds from 40 to 100 is quite a bit <laughs> uh, obviously it's quite a bit faster so that's pretty good so let's try the third gear and see what the difference is there all right third gear i feel like it's gonna go quite a bit slower 60. So as you can tell, that was basically a single gear pull because we're shifting a lot higher in third gear or in all the gears with the boss manifold versus the truck manifold. So we went 793, um, 798 versus our 973 in the second gear pull. And then we went, was it 890 something like that versus 973 in a third gear pull. So that tells you a couple things. Obviously, versus stock we made a huge improvement almost two seconds faster from 40 to 100 which i know was just kind of a uh, just a you know metric that i didn't make up but like you may not be super familiar with it but that is a lot if you think about it you're racing a guy he goes uh, 100 miles an hour two seconds faster than you and you guys started at 40 he's gapping your ass so um obviously the boss manifold and the tune does a lot a lot for your truck i think what is gonna be pretty happy we still have some more tuning to go uh, i'm gonna keep tuning this truck but that's gonna be it for the video and also another thing it tells you is depending on your manifold it might be better if you're in a higher gear or a lower gear it depends on what manifold you have and and it, it and your truck really it just tells you it goes to show that that it pays to test and tune your truck so buy a draggy, go out there. You know, if you know in town, everyone likes to do 40 rolls or everyone likes to do 50 rolls, go get a draggy and do a 40 to 100, 50 to 100, 50 to 120, 60, whatever the roll that you know you're gonna do more than anything and figure out what gear it likes most, you know? And uh, you'll, you'll learn what your truck likes, where your truck's fastest and you'll win more races. And that just comes with, that comes with racing. A lot of people think that they just slam on the gas and they're going to win a race. Well, that would be the case if the guy next to you is a lot slower than you. But if you guys are very close, or even if he's a little bit faster than you, because look at that, that even if he's just a little bit faster than you if, you, if you pick the right gear and he picks the wrong gear, which in my mind, I would have thought that second gear would have been faster with the stock truck manifold and the stock uh, tune than third gear. But according to the draggy, third gear was faster it was a hundredth faster of a second but also remember this it was on an uphill slope at 0.38 i think it was like 0.38 or something it was on an uphill slope versus a slightly downhill slope with the second gear pull so what you think is the fastest may not always be the fastest it may feel the fastest but it may not always be the fastest get a draggy test your truck and uh you'll win more races you win more races like that. It's plain and simple. The more more you know your truck, you might beat people faster than you because they don't know their truck or their car as well as you do. So, see you guys next time.